there are going to be a number of changes that happen in your bloodstream as you go up to altitude and eventually as you adapt to that altitude. That's what we're gonna be discussing here. So one of the first things that happens when you go up to altitude is you're gonna have a decrease in your plasma volume. This is the fluid portion of your blood. So essentially the water within your blood. This is gonna begin within hours of arriving, arriving at altitude and is going to continue over several days to potentially weeks depending on the uh, level of altitude that you're at. And this is essentially you dehydrating. So you're going to have either normal to high levels of respiratory fluid loss. So as you breathe in and out, the air that you're breathing in is dry. The air you're breathing out is fully humidified. Um, so you're losing a lot of water that way. You're also going to have an increase of urine production. And all this is not going to be replaced as it normally would, leading to that reduction in plasma volume. Um, so you can lose up to 25% of your plasma volume, again, those first days to weeks. Um, this is a short-term uh, adjustment that your body does, and the benefit to it is that it's going to concentrate your remaining red blood cells, which concentrates the, the hemoglobin within those red blood cells in your blood. So it means per unit of blood, you're getting more red blood cells, more hemoglobin out to the body. Um, not always such a great thing, but it, it can at least increase the oxygen concentration within your blood because it's concentrating those carrying hormones, those, those carrying proteins. Um, over time, though, this should return back to normal or near normal as you're, um, over an additional few weeks or so because your plasma volume will return eventually. The other big change that's happening is going to be with the red blood cells, which is what makes up most of the remainder of your blood. Right, so uh, within about three hours of going to altitude, a high altitude, enough to trigger some form of hypoxia, even mild hypoxia, your kidneys are going to sense this and they're going to start to secrete urethroproetin, which is EPO. Uh, this is the hormone that stimulates the bone marrow to start uh, producing and releasing red blood cells into the bloodstream. And you're going to get a... Um, uh, increase in red blood cells in the bloodstream within about two weeks. All right, a small increase, but you'll get an increase by about two weeks. Um, and then you'll have an increase in hemoglobin concentration, which is in that red blood cells that is measurable within sort of a, a weeks to months. So it takes a little longer for, it to in, uh, for those red blood cells to build up enough to basically sense that increase in hemoglobin. All right, so what's going to happen again is you're going to get a decrease in plasma volume initially. You're going to get over time an increase in red blood cells, and then the plasma volume will return. In another video, I'm going to start getting into exactly what's going to be changing with your cardiorespiratory system when you exercise at altitude versus what it was at sea level. And we'll talk about the various components of that.